All right, we gotta bring in a little brief catch up of where I'm at. As you can see, I started bolting up some suspension stuff. I finally sold my bike, ordered my Willwoods front and backs. They're still about a week or two out because apparently they're either back order or Willwood, according to, I think TH Motorsports is where I ordered them from. According to them, they said something about Willwood made a change or a modification to, to the brakes and they sent back what they had in stock or something and are waiting on the new stuff to come in. I don't know. Sounds kind of like a BS story of they're just out of stock and didn't have their website updated. But anyways, ordered, I think they're the super lights, 14 inch, front and back. Fronts are six piston, rears are four piston, slotteds with black powder coat. This is Rod and Customs tubular powder coated control arms, their powder coated spindle, not their rack. This rack is from Speedway. Now, this is what they list as a Mustang 2 converted or Thunderbird rack. And it bolts up perfect and is $100 less than what Rod and Custom wanted. So a bunch of this stuff I'm subbing out. I kind of wish originally I would have gone with Speedway Motorsports because I mean it's, I'm pretty sure their parts are, or some of the stuff they're selling is China clones or just people that stole designs. But they sold pretty much the tubular control arms the Mustang to uh, cross member for like way less. Oh, I say way less. Each piece was like 50 to 100 bucks less. So it totaled up, I probably could have built this thing front end for about half. Now granted, Rod and Custom support is amazing. My control arms shipped without these bolts. Apparently this comes with the kit, but if you order just the control arms, since I was originally I'm doing the kit with them and I talked them into sending me piece by piece, because originally all I needed was the stuff to do my welding, so I ordered the, the cross member so I could get it welded up. Didn't need any of this other stuff because I was, wasn't was in a super hurry to weld this stuff up. I just mainly needed it for my, originally for my frame rails to get my spacing right on it. But he worked with me, told me I could just order piece by piece. He'd still give me the kit price. Um, but then later I asked him about subbing out parts and told him what I could get them for for like my Willwoods. My fronts, I paid, they were right at 1500 for the fronts, for the brakes. They quoted me 1800. Whenever I told him I could get them for 15, he said his cost wasn't even that low. So he said, if I could get stuff that cheap, do it. So they're definitely good people. I mean, they're cool to work with. I did try to get them to give me more info on the control arm, I mean on the coilovers because apparently they're QA1 coilovers, but they're, I guess, kind of built to their spec, their custom pieces, because it's their eyelet, both top and bottom, but the bottom is an inch wide right here. The top is an inch and a half. And I was thinking these coilovers are the exact same as my rears. I tried to bolt up my rears the other day to this system to see if the, the length was right. I think they're 12 inch, the ones I have. I don't know if this is supposed to be 12 inch or 11. Someone else that has a Mustang 2 kit might be able to tell me I don't even know, they might be different depending on the kit. But I wanna say Rod and Customs is either 11 or 12 inch. Just gotta find out which. But the kit for the rear that I have fits the top, but not the bottom. So it's inch and a half with the bushing they have. So I think I'm gonna end up having to get longer rod ends because these only thread in about, I don't know, maybe half inch, a little more. Don't know. I don't feel comfortable with that being enough. I like them threading in a good inch, inch and a half normally. I, I don't know, that might be okay to run these. I might end up ordering long ones. But the downside is these suckers are like 10 bucks maybe. The long ones are like 40 a piece or some shit. It's ridiculous. Unless I can find them cheaper elsewhere. I'm sure I can, but Speedway, that's what they were. So, Fitted up a rack. I gotta find out about rack bolts too. Um, there's like a little chamfer on the inset 
of the rack itself where it seems like a bolt or a washer would recess to center the washer. I don't know if you can tell how it's not centered. It doesn't cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna see if they actually make correct bolts and washers for that. Because the backs, roll this around so you can see, but. Oh, wrong thing. Let's see, over. Yep, there. That, you can see it's not threaded in at all. It's just enough to hold the thing up. So, I'm gonna have to get some longer bolts. These are seven and a half inch grade eights. So if nothing else, I'll have to order eight inch grade eights. And I'll probably order some more washers when I do, because it comes from Fastenal. And maybe these, the washers I get will be a little bit bigger. I'll, uh, this bushing kind of flattens out as you tighten it down, I believe. So I'll check that too. And those bolts would maybe work. I don't know, once the, if I were to torque it down, I didn't want to torque down and risk stripping those threads off since it didn't, didn't tighten down a whole lot on them. But anyways, the goal now is to get this thing on wheels because I need to get my gap set on these fenders so I can work my gaps with the door. So to do that, the hood won't go on because of the rotisserie. I tried it the other day. It, uh, with closing the door, we could actually get the hood on, but we couldn't bring the hood down because this rotisserie is hit. So, I also am still waiting on my bearing ends for my buddy. And that was a thing. So, got some fuel tank sealer. Did that just a few ago. I don't know if you'll be able to see it well, but... Yeah, you'll, you can only see the mouth of it. It's not going to light up enough in there. Yep, no way to see in there really. But anyways, so that's coated inside. Pardon the camera for a sec. I need to rotate this thing, I forgot about it. So I ordered a cinder for this thing. Found a company online that does them and I probably overpaid out the ass for it. But I needed it for what it was. They actually, I think it's Spectre or Spectra, makes an in-tank fuel EFI pump. I don't know if it'll be able to keep up with the power I'm wanting to feed on this thing, but I want to say it was like 255 liter per hour, but I don't know what PSI, I don't know if it can keep up, but it uses a 3 8 line. I'm running half inch lines on this car. The, the cinder I ordered is just a billet piece. It fits in a stock location and it has two AN10 barbs that come off of it. New cinder, all billet, uh, either aluminum or brass. And uh, I don't think it has any stainless on it, but it's a billet piece. It's, it's quality made. You can tell he, he made it with in, in shop with a mill and lathe or whatever for the pieces. It's, it's definitely well made. It's not just home built in someone's garage or something, but he makes a bunch of stuff for drag cars and whatnot, high torque starters, etc. So it seemed like a legit company. It was 200 bucks for that sending unit though, or a sending unit slash filler neck, whatever piece. Came with new O-ring, new lock ring, but it was $200. Hurt a little bit, but I needed it for the fuel system I'm running. I did already order my other fuel stuff. I have a Holly 12-1200 fuel pump along with the filters to match, and everything on the car will pretty much be AN fittings. I have not ordered my hard line yet. I haven't figured out my routing. Um, it's looking like it's gonna end up being a feed on that side and a return on the driver's side, running alongside the brake line. But I'm not positive yet. But I've also gotta have to order a hydraulic flaring tool because it'll be stainless hard lines like I said half inch feed half inch return I don't know if I need to run a quarter inch or a 3 16th brake line brake line yet it'll be stainless as well but I'll need the hydraulic tool to do the flares for the fuel lines because they are 37 degree for the AN flare but 
so that's the next step. So I've got to order coilovers Tuesday because everybody's going to be closed for Memorial Day. And then it'll just be a hold up on waiting on the brakes to show up. And for my friend to make me my bearing in so I can weld up my axle. The fuel system will be the next step after that. I'll start working at Um, I needed to get the tank done so I can lay it in to see how I want to plan out the lines. But just seeing this stuff bolted up, this is the stuff I like getting into. When it's actually turning wrenches, that's what excites me. I like fab work, like doing the rear ends. Whenever it comes time to do the turbo stuff and doing the exhaust, that's going to get me excited. Body work, on the other hand, dreading it. Truly dreading it. I did watch some videos and hopefully Joe Daddy releases one he's working on where he did just what I'm about to do. This gap and this gap. And I saw on the pictures he posted on Instagram, he wipes over the whole thing. And I'd seen before on a clip of video where they take foam and stick it along the inside, shut the door against the foam and the foam will keep the filler from pushing into this gap and you can either do one or two things well actually you can do a couple things i've seen some people take a paint stirring stick and put a razor blade on each side and just run down this you do that before it sets up i've seen somebody take a drill bit after it's set up and run a drill bit down it joe daddy i think in his instagram picture it looked like he had a cutoff wheel that he was running down it I'd be kind of sketched to do that. I don't want to cut off wheel to dig into the metal. But that's where it's at. Um, I keep saying I'm going to get a video of me actually doing some work on this thing again. But I don't know. It, it just takes time to set up camera and do all that. And uh, time is of the essence. So they say, to me, time is money. And if I'm spending a bunch of time setting up cameras and stuff, I'm not getting work done on this thing. And I'm on a time frame on this, sort of. I wanna get this thing on the road for cruising. I highly doubt I'm gonna make it this year. There's just too much left to do on it and too much money I still need to sink into it. I did end up selling my small bearing nine Sold my eight inch housing, sold the bike, sold a bunch of the old Mustang parts. Uh, a guy close by came by the, yesterday, I believe, or day before, and bought up a bunch of old parts from me. So because of that, I was able to go ahead and order my harness. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to order my seat and start the cluster, because one of the things I sold was my old cluster. So it'll be, auto meter cobalts that'll be going back in this thing. One thing I have to do, I sold all my interior trim pieces to him. Like my, my centerpiece, the top dash section there and the little side dash piece. This piece right here where this hole is, where the heater controls normally go, I won't be using. It's getting an AC system. It'll be electronically controlled off the center console probably with like a billet AC control and I just need to cover that hole with something blank. So hopefully I can fab something up or see if my machine buddy can fab me a piece and just do brushed aluminum on that side where it'll match the rest of the brushed aluminum. But anyways, I'll bring this video to an end. It, it's run all ways. I mainly just wanted to touch base and show where I was at and what I was working on, show off this stuff. And, Pretty much just do a catch up video. But um, I think that's everything, guys. Keep tuned if you're interested. If you got comments, questions, tips, shoot them. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys.